You're listening to SM Media, the home of exclusive West of Scotland Football League content. folks and welcome to part three of our West of Scotland Football League Premier Division season preview on SM Media. I'm Scott McPike, it's an absolute pleasure as always to join you. We are going to take a look at the following four teams in this episode of the show. We're going to take a look at Pollock and we spoke to their manager Murdo McKinnon about their hopes for the season ahead. We also spoke to Cowan and Rangers and their, their new manager David Gormley on what his ambitions as he looks to put put a title challenge on that Premier Division this season. Beef Juniors have a new manager in Chris Strain and we spoke to their forward Jay Mackay on their thoughts on the season ahead. And it's been all change at Atherley over the past couple of weeks as Andy McFadden has left due to work commitments as manager and has been replaced by Craig Palmer. So we spoke to their defender Lance Pierce to talk about their season ahead. We will start by looking at Pollock. So delighted to be joined by the Pollock manager, Murdo McKinnon. Murdo, it's a pleasure to welcome you on to the season preview. Thank you very much, as always. Thanks very much for having me. Thanks for asking me. Good to be back. Well, it's a pleasure, as always. Overall, last season, finishing third in the league, it was probably, it's probably a good season in retrospect, wasn't it? Um, okay, Paul, we're always looking to win things at Paul. You know, we led the league for, for, for a good while. Um, so overall, we were a bit disappointed, to be totally honest with you, right. how it, how, how it, um, how it ended, but you know, um, over, listen, the league's a very, very strong league with a lot of what an excellent sides in it, you know. So, um, it would be arrogant to sit there and say you, know, you should have won the league, you should have done this, you should have done that, but it's um, we didn't, so we need to be better this year, that's for sure. But, um, third overall, it's um, it, it, you know, 20 team league, it was something I've never experienced before, so it was uh, it was tough, really tough, really tough. We're obviously, we're obviously down to a 16-team league this season, so it's one thing when you look at the league, how competitive it is, it's just stacked from top to bottom, isn't it? Aye, absolutely. You know, I think even the 20 team last year, you know, I was, I was saying to kind of staff and Budgie and, and, and Baggis and stuff like that, the work ways, and, um, that any team can beat any team in, in this league, Scott. If you're not on it, you know, any, anybody can turn you over, you know, and... Um, but the, you know the, the quality that we're getting into the league, you know, and the teams that we've got in the league are, you know, all quality sides, all really good teams, you know, uh, playing different ways, and they've got really good players within them and stuff like that, you know. So I think our game and uh, our league, uh, you know, has has improved. You know, I think it, I think it's uh, it's a really really good league, uh, really good players in it, and um, I think the standard of the football, I think the standard of the facilities, I think the standards overall have have gone up. You know, um, for sure. You know, and and again, I'm 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 imagining this year will be no different. Yeah, big big season for the club as well. Obviously, getting the SFA membership. How big was that to get that through? I know it was something you were really working towards. Oh, brilliant! Uh, you know, listen, a lot of people behind the scenes are not a, a huge amount of work. You should take a huge amount of credit. But a club uh, of stature, you know, we we need to be looking to move move forward. Uh, we're in a pyramid system now. And I think, you know, as a club, we need to look to be trying to progress uh, to play at the, the, the highest level we can. Uh, and getting that licence was, was was so important. Um, you know, a pinnacle of that last year was obviously we got the floodlights put in and we played that um, cup tie. We, we climbed bank under those on the Monday night, big crowd there. And um, it's the first, obviously, with the experience Newlands Field under the lights and stuff. And it's always been a ground to play football in, but... Under the lights and that, it was just special, you know, it was absolutely brilliant, absolutely terrific, so we're hoping for many more of those nights and hopefully that licence in the Senior Scottish Cup can bring up. Yeah, absolutely. We'll talk about your, your transfer business so far, a lot of a lot of ends, a lot of ends for the kind of leagues above, like Sir Sean Burns for Shunra, Scott Rumsby for Clyde, Fraser Mullen for Cowan Beast, just three that catch the eye, I mean, there's a lot, how vital was that to get the kind of players in for the kind of leagues above with a bit of experience? I, I, importantly, we're a bit experienced, but importantly, all the guys that you've mentioned are on the prime of their career. Yeah. You know, we're not bringing, we're bringing guys down for the seniors who are in their late thirties and, and finishing up. I suspect the guys that you know are in their late thirties can do because I, I, I have seen a lot of signings, you know, within that that kind of age bracket. But these guys, you know, really look after themselves. So you know, they're in, you know, great physical condition and they can still play. You know, for for sure. 
Um, but my mindset is I wanted to bring players down that within that age gap so that when they came to Paul, we had we had the best years, you know, um, with them. But they, they, they've got still got the best years in front of them as well. You know, but the names you mentioned, yeah, but we've brought other, you know, Ryan Cinnamon, terrific player. Ryan and I worked together at Rangers previously when he was a bit younger. Um, along with Dylan Dykes, you know, who we brought on at the end of last season. So we forget about him as well. You know, Dylan kind of came in and he's also, but, you know, Burnsy, top class pro. You know, he's been, you know, over 300 odd games in the senior um, senior game. Um, and, you know, Scott Rumsby, as you'd mentioned, but um, we've also, you know, Fraser Mullen, Robbie Buchanan, both playing at Hearts, you know, and, yeah. you know, Fraser's got, you know, um, a great pedigree um, where he, he, you know, he's played in the Premier League, he's played for Hearts, I think he's made, you know, 10 appearances for Hearts in the Premier League, played for Hubs also, you know, so we forget about that as well. So all these guys have got really good pedigrees and I have to say they've been absolutely excellent since they've come in the door, absolutely excellent. Their attitudes, their work, work ethic, their, you know, they're willing to win, uh, they're willing to win in their... Um, and that's why they're here. They want to win. They want to win. They want to be involved in something. They're going to go and win games. They're going to go and challenge for cups and championships. And you know, um, so we've certainly upgraded um, in those departments. Probably other names, you know, like you mentioned there, uh, Ryan Waters, some of the older kind of um, season kind of junior fans will remember his dad, Wally Waters. You know, as a striker, but Ryan was playing down south for a wee while and. Uh, he's coming in as well, so you know we'll, 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 we've got great balance and 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 also bringing Dan Christie back to the club. Mm-hmm. Dan's had a short spell with Pollock and then the COVID thing kind of moved it in loan, you know, maybe BSC and Ann and then obviously to have the opportunity to go and play in the seniors. We stayed in house Mule last year, last year, and it did, did brilliantly. So you know, Dan's come in and hit the ground running. He's been absolutely phenomenal since he's come in as well. So I've made really good signings and. Every one of them has been fantastic, but you know I think I think it's important to mention also that we, you know, we've got really good players at the club. Yeah. Any you know, before we brought those those guys in, so they're bringing them in to complement the, you know, the the the, the crux of um, great players that we already have there. You know, so hopefully we can get the right blend and we can get the right team spirit, which it seems to be on track anyway uh, to go and make a real challenge. You know, so I'm delighted with the business we've done. Absolutely. We'll finish up with just a, a quick thing as well. The quick quick turnaround, obviously, for last season. I think your last game was something like the 27th of May. To now, what do you think of that? Is it obviously the is that kind of hindering your pre-season or has it been kind of have you expected the boys to be a bit sharper or what's your kind of been on overall thoughts? Has it been a short well, system for them? I, we were actually into June. We actually played our yeah. last game into so um I it, it, listen, it, there's no doubt that that was tough. I think we were supposed to finish Everton. Um, by then they may be done uh, so the boys got a decent break I think overall the boys got a couple of weeks off got two weeks off um, and we were back into it that was me extending um, the break a wee bit because we, we would normally be back in mid-June you know kind of second last week in June something like that so we extended that a wee bit because you know um, the boys needed a wee bit of time not just physically but mentally as well because that 20 team league or the cup competitions we were in and stuff like that you know there's a mental challenge with that as well. You just need a bit of downtime, need a bit of time to spend with their families and stuff like that, which is important. Um, so that they're fresh and they're fresh minded when they come back in to hit the ground running. But balancing that Scott was really difficult way. As you mentioned, I brought eight players down, the majority of them for the seniors. Yeah. Um, apart from one guy I should have mentioned was Stephen Dockery. Um, you know, bringing him in for Peter Sill. So um we we um you know, those those senior lads ha- had finished football in May. So there's a balance there to be had as well, you know. So they had, we had to get them going again. Um, but again, they've looked after themselves brilliantly. There's been no issue with that. But um, no one wants no other breaks me. Yeah. <laughs> that's the challenges of a manager, I'm afraid. So I just need to go on with that. But no, it's been tough. It's been tough. It's been one of the toughest seasons, one of the toughest pre-seasons that I've experienced, if I'm being honest with you. In my time, so um, but I'm I'm no unique. Everybody's had the same challenges, you know. Um, to that, so um, myself, Paul, our players are no unique. The challenges are shared across the league, and everybody's kind of trying to deal with them in their own way. I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. It's a pleasure to be on Murdo and Best of luck for the season ahead. Thank you very much. Great to be on. I hope to speak to you later in the season. So it's an absolute pleasure to be joined by the Co-Winning Rangers manager, David Gormley. David, it's a pleasure to welcome you back onto the show. Thanks for coming on. 
Cheers, mate. Good to see you. It's an absolute Good pleasure. To... How are we? Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, nice sunny day, so all good. Nice. Obviously, as well, you're back in the West after the after obviously being at Broomhill last season. How good has it to be back in the, the league and obviously back at uh, going to go winning? Aye, it's uh, it's really good to be honest. Uh, obviously, last season I was in the league above and uh, the low league, but coming back down to this level is just you, you get reminded of the past, how passionate uh, the fans are, and how how much rivalry between all the clubs are. Uh, which I missed out on the last year, to be honest. So I've missed it. Uh, I've only been here. I've only been in, involved for the last maybe four weeks, and already you can sense it's going to be a, a real exciting season. No, absolutely. As well, obviously, you, your first game was your first game in the cup final. Was that right? It was to a certain degree. Yes, it was. Uh, obviously, with uh, it was supposed to be Big, Big Sparky, who's now my assistant manager. He was supposed to take it, but his work commitments uh, right. through a span of the work. So. Uh, I went in and I took it, but for me, the, my first game starts, my first competitive game starts on the 30th of July against other medal. Mm-hmm, definitely. We'll talk a wee bit, obviously, about the, the summer. You've had to do a lot of kind of business to bring players in. Obviously, it's, it's been a tough kind of couple of months. How have you found it been settled in at the boss and bringing in players? We'll touch about the player in a second, but what's it been like, obviously, being in the door? It's been fine. It's been, it's been what I expected to... In terms of, like we say, we'll touch on player recruitment. That is what I expected. It's going to be the summer for a manager. Is always mayhem in terms of you speak to fifty, to sixty players, and you only maybe sign 10, 12 of them at a push. So it's mayhem. It is. It's part and part of the job that, that, that gets you through uh, to see what you've built throughout the season. I guess you get to put your players in to see what you've built so it's been fine but in terms of obviously co-winning, co-winning I didn't realise how big a club co-winning Rangers is uh, it's massive that you we you know, haven't first time down to see with the interview and get interviewed and things like that it was just you go down and see the pitch and see the training pitch you see the, 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 the pitch the grass pitch you see the facilities the trainer you see where they get changed you see they've got a, a kit man a full time kit man so mm-hmm. it did kind of blow me away to be honest uh, and every single session, every single week, I'm finding something new in terms of the, what the club can do and what the, what they can what they're doing. Uh, so, I uh, it's, it's incredible how massive the Cohen and Rangers is. And we'll touch about your transfer activity as well. Obviously, the before we get into the transfer activity, how impressed are you with the the reviews that were were shown? I have to give us a mention because we spoke about it all summer. How good the the reviews were? Ah, uh, they are. They are. Uh, every club battling against each other and to try and get. <laughs> Try and top them, so ah, it's good. Uh, Oils came out of a, yeah, a worldwide win week as such, maybe because <coughs> waited, we done the right thing and waited until they were all away from their other clubs. Uh, and we waited until we had spoke to everybody at our club before we managed the MB. So uh, it looked as if everybody, all my signings came out once, but they were the fruit, the fruit, the full summer. These guys came and just they got announced at the one time. Yeah, the first signing I want to touch on is obviously Dylan Martin for Sterling. That is a great piece of business to bring him in, and he's I think he's going to do really well in this league. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, listen, it wasn't hard. It wasn't easy. Sorry, getting Dylan, and it was hard. Uh, he was talking to a couple of managers in the league. Uh, potential maybe a couple maybe to say stay senior. So I had to get a chat with him. I had to like I'll probably say with all my signings here. I had to kind of. Show them, the, show them the club and as soon as they see the club as well they, their eyes are open in terms of how big the club is like I've just touched on for myself so yeah. uh, but for Dylan Dylan's obviously a local boy uh, he's from like, the Elfin area so he, he's, he's, he's just about to have a family and he wanted to maybe move back home somewhere local so as soon as I spoke to him I had to just try and get a good chat with him and he's been uh, he's been I'll probably say this about all my players that I've seen but he has been brilliant to work with uh, yeah. And he knows Dylan. He knows that he doesn't want to do the other side of the game. But I've seen a diff- I've seen him want to do that side. Every day I've spoke to him saying he's not going to do this. He's not going to do that. He can do this. For me, I've seen him doing both, bringing both into his game. So that's only maybe four pre-season friendlies. So he seems to have a wee bit between his teeth as well in terms of wanting to go and prove a few doubles wrong that have kind of knocked him back. Yeah, obviously you've done some really good business as well, bringing in like Chris Miller. His experience will be invaluable. But who else you can have brought in? Tell us a wee bit about your signings if you don't mind. Yeah, so 
we'll just touch on that one. So Brian Chris Miller from uh, East Kilbride, obviously ex senior, played with St Johnson and Morton and that. So he's been he's been unbelievable in terms of experience and uh, for bringing the young boys on as well that we've signed. Uh, he's been superb for us. Uh, a lot of people are saying about his legs, this and that, but there's no doubt about him. His legs have not gone. Uh, fittest player in the changing room mm-hmm. by a country mile. Uh, even in the games, he's still sharp. He's still can get about. And for me, he's going to be invaluable. Him, uh, he's also my vice captain and my captain, Kevin Nicol. I brought him from Clyde. Yeah. Two of the experience is, is incredible. Uh, and they will obviously look to bring on players like young players like Robbie Torrance I brought in from Rossville. Uh, we've brought in Craig Leach from Rutherland and Glencare. We've brought in Connor Bolger, a winger from Nielsen. So having these senior players is going to be invaluable for these uh, for these young boys. Uh, obviously, we've brought in the ones that were there. I, I want to give them a mention as well. You've got Jordan Stewart, who was there. Uh, still young, got great potential as well. So working with Kev, Nacho and Midge Miller will, will be good for him. Uh, Benji Lewis, who was there from last year. He's no young. He's, he's in his 30s, but he looks as if he's in your of life. I think, think he's been at the club for about 11, 12 years now. Uh, so he looks as if he's got a wee bit new of life in terms of these new players have come in. It's like a fresh start for him as such. So he's kicked on to another level. Uh, and then obviously we've got Thomas Collins and Dylan Martin up front. The two of them look to be building a good partnership. So yeah. uh, I've also brought in Mark Lamont, who was, uh, was at Clyde and Alloa. He came and loaned me Broom Hill for a while. A while. He never ever got a proper pre-season in him and he was kind of falling behind all the time in terms of getting his fitness because of the pre never got a good pre-season but he's had a good pre-season this summer and he looks to be flying, he looks to be right up for the battle in terms of what's involved and uh, he looks to be a good one as well. Brilliant. Well obviously the, the kind of overall target for the season, we've spoke about how competitive the league is but you must be finding your chances to do really well in this league. The, the league is going to be super competitive. You've got Every team's going to be up for it. Every team's going to be going to every game you win. win. Uh, and that even goes like, from everybody, not just Cowan and Paul, Darvo, Talbot. You're going to be coming up, going after B, Trun, Largs, Rob Roy. They finished off strongly as well. Mm-hmm. These teams going after, as I said. So every team will be going to win every game on Saturday. So it's not going to be any teams. No disrespect to the teams that were in the league last year, but you maybe had four or five teams looking from the outset. For myself, you had four or five teams that potentially knew they were going to be down in that bottom. I couldn't tell you right now who's going to win it. I couldn't tell you right now who's going to get out of it. So mm-hmm. it just makes it super exciting. Yeah. Well, we're wishing you all the best, David. Thank you very much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. No problem at all. Thank you very much, Scott. So it's a pleasure to welcome on to the show the Beat Forward, Jay Mackay. Jay, it's a pleasure to welcome you on to the show. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, mate. Thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. How are we? I'm all good, mate. I'm all good. Bit too warm, but other than that, we're good. So we're recording this in the warmest day in history, so we'll please forgive us if we start sweating. But it was obviously, it's been a busy summer. We obviously, Boots leaving and Chris Strain coming in as manager at Bees. What's been the kind of overall thoughts on that and how excited are you to work with Strainy? I well, didn't know much about him. Obviously, you only play against him, but he's came in. Training's been absolutely brilliant. So his his ideas, and that about the place, been really good. Enjoyed my time pre season. It's been really good. Brilliant. What about the kind of season last year? Obviously, staying up was the the main thing for every club. How good was it to just secure that? Ah, uh, yeah, I you're saying that, but a club like me, we should have been there in the first place. I think the boys kind of let Butch not do to be honest last year. Uh, I don't think we were good enough. Uh, all the boys will tell you that themselves, do you know what I mean? But staying up, got another crack at this year and hopefully kick on a wee bit. It's been a quick turnaround as well, obviously, with the, the season finishing so late last year and starting so early this year. So what's the kind of thoughts on that? How hard has it been to get your body back to the football I, line? Uh, well, we got a good kind of four weeks, I think. Probably four weeks break. And then it's just, as I said, straight back into pre-season hard graft and that's just starting to get friendlies now so it's been a bit probably a week behind schedule but you need to recover as well that's the main part absolutely one thing as well obviously we'll touch on the transfer activity but you've obviously stayed on Josh Fowler kind of Kenny McLean as well how big are you the kind of front three and how much he's looking to obviously add goals more this season oh I don't think you're known but that's me I'm a number six now Scott yeah, yeah. I see you have moved in mate 
I can't get a game up front because Kenny and Josh keep scoring, mate. So that's me bin to the six. Well, it's obviously the kind of transfer activity. I'll just kind of touch through a couple of players that have been brought in. Rooney Lang and obviously Fish and Ra. Dale Burgess obviously leaving, so there's Michael McNiven facing Caddox is obviously commanding goals. How what are the kind of new players been like Kieran Coleman as well for Rutherglands, another big signing. What's the kind of new how the new players kind of settled in? I they're all fitting in well. I think we've got a good group there. Um the boys were already like frising that we're all kind of good boys, kinda of bedding in quite well. Been hard sessions training that so now we'll start finding that people are all about and uh, more of the games build up to the season kicking off. Her. So right. we will find out more about the boys, but I everybody's getting on well. Just hopefully we get a better season last. Yeah, absolutely as well. How big is in a obviously known strainy the way the way we do, we know he's obviously a winner and he wants to be at the top. He wants to kind of keep the top club at the top level. What's how what's it been the kind of difference? What's kind of strainy been saying? Has it just been to improve on last year? Aye, aye. Don't want to get ahead yourself, it's a difficult league and all, but hey, we're all in it to win things, aren't we? We all play football to win. All the players, everybody, we all want to win, so just need to take it game by game. Hopefully, kind of better season last year, hopefully at the top end, competing for silverware. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, what's pre-season been like as well? Has been good to get some games under your belt? Uh, I've played my first one last night, so 90 minutes, man, I'm done in. <laughs> so I'm on my first one, I'm done in, man, 90 minutes, game tomorrow and all. Uh, but it's good to get the boss back out. Hard work, hopefully done now, and hopefully kick on a few games, and then Kind of, I've got a few friendlies lined up the next week or so, and then it's I think it's only a week started there to the league start, so yeah, no long now. Yeah, absolutely as well. Obviously, one thing we've touched on everybody is just how competitive the league is this season. Would you go along with that? Aye, definitely. There's you can make a case for a lot of the teams, can't you? People are strengthening at all. You see the signings get made with some of the clubs, some top players coming in. Some aye, very good week. Very yeah, good absolutely. week. Absolutely, obviously the. How kind of good is it as well? To obviously, we've had a, a difficult couple of years with COVID and getting back to just a kind of normal pre season and get the season started again and just get back oh. to normal Saturday, Saturday. That's that's the way you want it, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a nightmare the last few years. It's been absolute, it's been the same for everybody but us. So uh, it's been difficult, but I, it's just even the training that, you know, just to get out back with the boys and that kind of enjoyment and a wee bit of freedom in it, kind of can. Enjoy yourself. It's been brilliant. It's been good to aye. Hard work, but good. Yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll find we'll, we'll finish up with the, the final question. What's the kind of overall target for the season? What would you just be happy with as a as a team in the dressing room? What's the target for us? Oh, I don't make predictions, mate. <laughs> yeah, I might want everything right, but top end challenging anyway. You want to be challenging. You want to be there or thereabouts, then you you want to kinda of be at that end. Last year was difficult, we ended up with sitting mid-table and then you end up in a dog fight. Can I do it the last two games? We don't want that again. Yeah. Uh, so for me personally, what about the tap end challenging and hopefully we'll be there or thereabouts. Well, we wish you all the best for the season ahead. Thanks very much, Jay. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for your time, Scott. Thanks, mate. So it's a pleasure to welcome Arthur Lee's Lance Pierce on the show. Lance, it's a pleasure to welcome you on. Thanks for joining me. No problem at all. Thanks for having me on, Scott. It's an absolute pleasure. We need to obviously start with it. We're recording this show on the Tuesday, the 19th. Obviously, yesterday, Andy McFadden left after the obviously duty work commitments. Before we can talk about the kind of future of the, the club, how hard is it going to be losing Andy? It's a difficult one because he was such a good guy round all of the players. Um, was one of these people that you could speak to about every anything. He always oversaw things. When you need a rock up the backside, he was there. If, or if it was an arm round your shoulder, as I said, it, it's a difficult one because it wasn't because of the season that we had previously, results or anything like that, but because it was work commitments, I think also makes it a little bit harder because all the time he was doing last season, going forward this year as well with his coaching staff as well. Yeah. So it is it. It's gutting, to be honest with you, but it's not much we can do now, unfortunately. Yeah, it's just obviously a, a, a bad one, obviously, for the club. Obviously, coming off a, a tremendous season last season, where you just went unbeaten and just clinched promotion to the Premier Division. Great season, all in. Hi. Um, I, I don't think that if you had to say at the beginning of the season, I mean, the goal was to win the league. 
and that was it really but to then go undefeated that's just a bonus to be honest with you and something that you don't expect but then as it gets closer the team are playing well you're grinding out results when you're in the trenches etc as well it just shows that togetherness and that bond that the players had that like I said, we probably got to the last two, three months, you're actually wondering whether or not you could possibly do it. But our main focus was just a game at a time and making sure that we got into the Supreme, which is the main objective for last year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, obviously, we'll, we'll touch a bit in the quick turnaround for last season. You just kind of finished quite early due to the way the kind of league worked out. So have you just kind of had a good break before the, the season starts this year to get kind of back to normal? <laughs> I think when you've been doing it this long, it, the breaks seem shorter every year. But no, it, it's been it's been okay. The guys have been brilliant with us, and since we've been back in preseason, because it hasn't been that long, the boys have came back with a good level of fitness as well. That preseason is an old school dinosaur preseason, if that makes sense as well. Don't get me wrong; it's very tough at times, but it is it isn't bad at all. So. In terms of the break, it was well needed, but it's also at that stage where boys will go on holiday here, there, whenever they can, because of the summer holidays, the kids, all of the different factors. But no, be okay. That way you can't wait for the break, but then as soon as you have it, you can't wait to get back. So you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, absolutely as well. Craig Palmer's obviously the new manager at Affiliate. Yeah, how excited are you taking on getting started with him? Yeah, really looking forward to it. Again, Palmer knows the boys really well. He was there last season as well. I think he's played with a lot of the boys or he's seen he's seen them play a lot of the time. He had a full season under, well, the gaffer's wing as well. Mm-hmm. At times he had to step in because of work commitments as well. But no, really excited to get started and see what he can do in terms of his journey. But I'm sure that the boys will all pull together as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Transfer activity, who's kind of, the likes of kind of Dale Simeon and Gary Carroll have all stayed, they were obviously key last season, but who's who's kind of come in and who's left this, so far this summer? Oh, <laughs> hope I get this right. So, <laughs> Lewis Warnock's came in, Shieldsies came in, Aaron Healy signed from the 20s and a couple of the other boys as well. In terms of departures, Gebby's left, Chalmers has left, as well just off the top of my head so the nucleus of the squad is still there it hasn't been a mass turnaround but there have been one or two additions as well just to add to it which you have to do especially going into the league that we're going into so no it's still as I said the majority of the boys are there and you're just adding in a couple of bodies so it hasn't been a mass overhaul in any way okay well obviously talk about about your pre-season so far as well is it good to get a few games under your belt it is um (laughs) I mean, pre-season, as I said, we've been fortunate that we have played that many games and it's all about minutes at this stage. I mean, yeah. I know that some people sometimes look at the results during pre-season, but that's not the case. It's about getting the fitness and the legs back to playing as well, because even though it may have only been four or five weeks, you lose it that quickly that you just want to kick a ball about again. So, mm-hmm. no, pre-seasons went semi-well, I would say as well. As you know, you always have to build on things you have to try and improve as well which I think we'll get to as well but as I said it's minutes in the legs just now and hopefully making that bond even stronger the new boys coming in to understand our style of play and just making themselves feel part of that family in the dressing room as well yeah absolutely obviously the the one thing we've touched on with everybody is how competitive this league is going to be this season Three teams coming up, obviously, from the conferences. You are one of them. You are, you are granted a tough league, but you must fancy your chances to have a really good season after the back of last year. <laughs> it's one of those that you just take it game by game and you hope to finish as high up as possible. It's one of those, anyone can be anyone in this league. The investment in terms of the infrastructure on and off the pitch from every club has been outstanding because that glass ceiling has now disappeared and mm-hmm. there's a pathway in place. Yes, it's difficult with only one going up, but as I said, anyone can be anyone in this league. The players and the quality in it are absolutely excellent. So I think every game, there won't just be, oh, they're a stick on to win it. For instance, there'll be loads of shocks along the way. I think we all understand that. That's part and parcel of football, but it will be highly competitive and it will be interesting. But fingers crossed that we can cause a few upsets as well and just do semi, do pretty well. 
Yeah, obviously, from a personal point of view for you, like uh, last season, you've done really well. Can I keep them goals out? It's obviously going to be the same again. Just keep that defence as tight as possible. <laughs> Fingers crossed we yeah. have as good a record this year as we did last year. But again, it'll be extremely difficult with the strikers in the league. You know how good they are as well. When you look all across the board, every team that you play against has an extremely good striker, runners from midfield as well. But if we can stick together, show that togetherness that we have the whole last season, especially when we weren't maybe playing at a peak, and we can bring it to this league as well, make us hard to beat, then you never know what can happen. But as I said, hopefully cause a few upsets, keep a couple of clean sheets personally and for this one as well because it gives us more of a chance of winning three points. Yeah, absolutely. Lance, it's been an absolute pleasure and best of luck for the season ahead. Thank you very much. No problem at all. Thanks for having me on. 